So, an authentic British military watch that was part of the Dirty Dozen? Sign me up. What's up guys, it's your boy Rich here back at it again. And let's go take a closer look at the insanely cool Vertex M100. Let's go. And here it is, the Vertex M100. And spoiler alert, I adore this watch. But I don't think pictures do this watch justice. It isn't until we get the really cool case uh, opening it and revealing the watch that we get that wow factor. And, and then we pick it up and we're able to handle it and we just see just how well made this watch is. It just has a real luxury feel to it. So let's get on with the dimensions. It is 40 millimeters, 47 millimeters from lug to lug. 10 millimeters thin and it uses a 20 millimeter lug width and let's start with the dial it is done in a matte black with arabic numerals that are carved out in solid loom sticks so you can imagine the kind of loom it produces and here it is the m100 was part of a collection of watches for the british military that was dubbed the dirty dozen and we'll talk more about those other watches and how this watch was chosen later on but though each of these dirty dozen watches had two unique markings that they all had to have that was determined by the british war office and the first characteristic is that they all had to have a broad arrow on the dial right here and the second characteristic is on the case back the original watches had www and no that didn't stand for World Wide web but it did stand for wrist watch waterproof and when I talked to Don about his choice of branding Vertex instead of www he was actually really modest and his explanation was that he didn't want to take ownership of something that 11 other wonderful brands also participated in let's go back to the dial right above 12 o'clock there we see two red dots and I don't know the significance of that but I just think it's really cool it gives the dial a nice pop of color and I like red because red has always been known to be an energy color and I like the sub dial second hand right there above six o'clock it just gives it a real nice vintage feel to the watch using really modern uh, materials this watch just has a, a really nice British feel to it it is done in an entirely brushed finish but there is also an M100 B that is available and that is their black DLC version of the M100. Uh, the M100 comes in a black leather strap lined in red, which is really cool, uh, and a NATO strap. This is in a, a silicone strap, a really nice quality silicone strap, one of the nicest that I've seen. And we can see here that the broad arrow is right on the front and it has the uh, vertex branding there on the buckle and on the back of the uh, strap it is well branded with the vertex uh, throughout there and this is it it has a the swatch is a self-adjusting uh, straps all of them are right here you just pull the pin out so there aren't any tools required uh, to change out the straps and speaking of straps let's take a look at some of vertexes <laughs> Now let's get to one of my favorite features of this watch and what powers this watch. It is powered by a custom ETA 7001 with a rhodium finish and Coats de Geneve decoration and a vertex engraved ratchet wheel just like the original 1944 version. Uh, it is not an automatic movement, it is a hand wound movement and I, I that is what attracted me to the watch. But most of my watches are automatics uh, in my collection so the appeal of adding a hand wound movement was strong i i know that may not be for everyone but i think it, it is really cool and necessary for the m100 because it was staying true to the original m100 and uh, let's get to story time for a moment here so let's get in a quick story time with my first experience with a hand wound movement and it was years ago with a panerai op in 44 millimeters i can't remember the reference number but you know at the time it was all I could afford uh, it was the base model it was $3,500 and for, at that time 44 millimeters and above were all the rage so all I cared about was owning a Panerai but the salesperson was trying to tell me on the importance of a hand wound movement meaning that we get to enjoy and connect with our watches every day but whatever you had me at Panerai but fast forward to today uh, and it is something that I, I actually agree with from a long time ago. I appreciate having a nice hand wound movement. And this wound watch is already fully wound, so I'm not going to 
I'm not going to actually wind it here, but it is a really nice sensation from the really nice crown in, in winding our watch. And it does produce a really nice sensation where we get to appreciate our watch every day uh, as we wind the movement. And with this hand wound movement, we get 42 hours of power reserve. So I want to talk a little bit about the Vertex M100's case. Uh, we've seen similar cases to this, uh, notably by Omega, but the Vertex case is a lot smaller. It's much more compact. Uh, to put that into reference, it's about the size of my hand, and there's the M100 on my wrist. Uh, and when we take a look at the case right here, it says Genuine Pelly Case, and I didn't know what that meant until I looked them up. And they make uh, high-quality, pressure-proof cases, including for the military. And when we open the case up, uh, here is the Vertex branding. The watch goes. This is uh, where the lovely leather strap with its uh, red lining goes. And information uh, about the uh, watch right here. And, you know, when we, when we carry this case around, it kind of gives us the feel of being James Bond, which makes sense since Vertex is a UK brand. The Vertex branding has so many wonderful stories built into it. It has a strong and legitimate DNA. It is a watch that actually saw uh, action in the British military. And it is a real family-run business. And when I asked Don uh, for his reason of bringing back the M100, and thankfully he did, it was to honor his grandmother. And I am a sucker for any business that is uh, family owned. So, you know, it is easy to get behind uh, the Vertex M100. Um, aside from the wonderful storytelling, it is just an exceptionally well-made, very luxury feel to the watch. The, the cost of the M100 is approximately $3,200. And we're back, and let's talk about the very impressive history of Vertex watches. Vertex started in 1916 by Claude Lyons, and by 1944, Vertex was chosen, chosen? chosen by the War Office to participate uh, for making watches with the British military along with 11 other elite watchmakers. And if you're Vertex, how are you able to join the ranks of 11 other prestigious watchmakers? Well, you do if you're Claude Lyons and you're able to speak both German and French, get Swiss watches and parts from neutral Switzerland. So Vertex was able to join the ranks of 11 other watchmakers to make watches for the British military for what's called Project Archer. And these 11 other watchmakers plus Vertex were dubbed the Dirty Dozen. Fast forward to 2016 where Don Cochrane, the great grandson of Claude Lyons, resurrected the brand by securing its trademark. And by 2017 he released the first M100s, but in a very unconventional way. Meaning we couldn't simply pick up the phone, call him and buy the watch, nor could we order the watch off his website. It was all done by a referral process, which means Don would select certain people he would want to buy his watch or we had to actually know someone who owned a Vertex in order to buy a Vertex. Uh, this was a very unique way and it has notes of a Patek Philippe application watch or Ferrari. But in those cases, they are far more extreme where we literally had to fill out an application, tell them who we are, what jobs we have, how much money we make, what other Patek Philippe and Ferraris we own. And still, after all that, the likelihood of being rejected by Patek Philippe and Ferrari was great. So in the case of Vertex, it was nowhere near extreme. And if we thought Don was crazy, and in this sense crazy is not an insult, it's a compliment, we would be right. He started off with 600 limited edition M100, and they were all sold. It's often the crazy ones, the eccentric ones, who dream big and often make it, and they often inspire us. And I think the current Nike commercial says it best. So don't ask if your dreams are crazy. Ask if they're crazy enough. Look, the referral process is definitely off the beaten path, but it was wildly successful, and I get it. The watch itself is that good. It was definitely worthwhile to go through that process, and in the press, it was very well received. In fact, I couldn't find anyone who had a negative word to say about the M100 because the watch is that cool. It started off as a British military watch and has morphed into still an authentic British military watch with strong DNA roots that is also now a luxury watch, which is kind of an oxymoron, but it works in this case. Now let's take a look at the entire list of watches that made up the Dirty Dozen. And if we're thinking to ourselves, all these watches look alike, well, our eyes are not deceiving us, and that's because 
All these watches have to have certain traits determined by the war office. This was not an opportunity for all these brands to create the most fanciful luxury looking watches. They were to serve a purpose. And the traits that all of these watches had to have were uh, a black dial, Arabic numbers, luminous hands, a uh, railroad minute track, shatterproof prospects glass, and in stainless steel. But who knew that these watches would actually be very fashionable and very cool looking all these decades later. Okay, so we're probably going to have to address the elephant in the room, and that's because $3,000 is not an insignificant amount, especially when we can find a watch at a fraction of the cost that looks like the M100, like Hamilton for example. But I think there are parallels between Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch and Vertex. For Omega, we are willing to spend $5,000 on a watch that doesn't even use a sapphire crystal, nor does it use Omega's in-house coaxial movement. Instead, it uses a plastic or hesalite crystal and a Lamania movement. But I get that because Omega is trying to stay true to the original moon watch. Still, we're willing to spend $5,000 on a watch because of its historically significant achievement. And for a lot of us, that really resonates with us and it's worth that price tag. And I think uh, it is very similar in Vertex's case because Vertex is for real watch collectors. I, it is not another homage or a watch that is inspired by. It is a watch with true DNA, like me. So the $3,000 price tag is sort of at the early stages of the gray area. It's certainly not priced at $30,000 because at a price like that, it would be very difficult to endorse. But for those of us who are real historical buffs and want a really cool looking watch that has some real DNA, I think it is priced accordingly and is a really great option. There are some of us who insist that we have to have a well-rounded watch collection. And by that, I mean we have to have a checklist of certain categories. For example, we all have to have a sports watch, a chronograph, a diver's watch, or a dress watch uh, to conclude a well-rounded watch collection. Though, I don't believe in that because we all have our own unique lifestyle. So, a dress watch or a chronograph may not fit our lifestyle. So, for me, a well-rounded watch collection is not a checklist. It's whatever meets our lifestyle. But uh, in keeping with this theme, uh, I actually, for the first time, would consider adding a military watch to that checklist because for the first time, the Vertex M100 really makes me want to have and made me want to have a military watch. I've enjoyed my conversations with Don. I think he is a really cool and proud guy. The kind of guy that we could have a drink with. And through Don, I've learned that he is developing an all new lineup of watches. Some that include automatic movements. And they should be ready, I think, by the, either by the end of the year or early next year. Uh, and as far as the referral program, he might do away with that because he's actually working on a lounge for Vertex owners where we can buy other Vertex watches there and have a whiskey. Yes, please. I've already reserved my plane ticket. Because of Vertex's really strong history and really bright future, it is a brand that we should definitely keep our eye on. And it makes the M100 or the M100B an easy recommend. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you the next time. So how did Vertex earn the privilege of being part of the Dirty Dozen? Well... <laughs> worth it. And if we're thinking they all look alike, where we can buy other Vertex watches and have a whiskey. So I've already reserved my...